Well, the big question is whether or not they can at least informally agree on a package of sanctions that would immediately take effect should Russia invade Ukraine. They definitely will not be actually adopting any kinds of sanctions package today. Uh, and indeed, we're told uh, they won't even be informally agreeing specific sanctions. The big question is, what do serious sanctions mean? Because as the EU prime ministers and presidents arrived here at the summit this morning, they all said that if Russia invades Ukraine, there's going to be a very serious response, unprecedented response. But what does that mean? They don't want to say yet. And indeed, a lot of the leaders in the European Council today say that this is not the time for any such sanctions package to be made public. But there's a divide in opinion here. The Ukrainian president thinks that the EU needs to lay its cards on the table here and say this is exactly what's going to happen to you, Russia, if you invade Ukraine, and it's very serious. But uh, certain prime ministers within the council, and that does seem to include Italy's Mario Draghi and the new German chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz, are sounding a more cautious note. And there is fear that if they do publicize a potential sanctions package, there's two problems. Either it's too severe uh, and it kind of escalates the situation, kind of goads Russia into acting, or it's not severe enough, making Putin think that he could invade Ukraine without consequence. So it's unlikely we're going to see a specific sanctions package, but we may get clear language at the end of today indicating just how serious it would be. People will really be parsing over the words used in the council conclusions issued at the end of the day to indicate how serious the EU is going to be. And of course, the issue of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline almost completely complete, set to bring lots of gas from Russia to Germany. The U.S. wants it canceled. Germany says it's almost it's almost ready to, to go. We can't cancel it now. But could Chancellor Schultz be convinced to say that he would cancel that pipeline if Russia invades Ukraine? That's definitely a question he'll be facing today. Now, Dave, all of this is coming as France has just announced it's tightening its COVID travel restrictions with the U.K. We'll listen now to the French government spokesperson, Gabriel Attal. We will put in place a system of controls drastically tighter than the one we already have. We're going to reduce the duration of validity of the test for coming into France. Up until now it was 48 hours and now it will be 24 hours. We're going to limit the reasons allowing people to come from the UK to France. You will have to subscribe to an application that will generate what's called a prefectorial order of self-isolation. That means that people who arrive in our country from the UK will have to self-isolate in a place of their choosing for seven days, monitored by the police. Self-isolation can be lifted, though, after 48 hours if you have received a negative test result in France. Now, Omicron could become the dominant variant across the EU as soon as next month. Dave, EU leaders have been talking about the pandemic response this morning. What have they had to say? Well, the big debate today is whether EU countries should and could start requiring tests, like France is requiring for the UK, for travel within the EU. For the past six months, the system of vaccination certification, the so-called vaccine passport, has enabled relatively hassle-free travel within the EU. As long as you were vaccinated, you could go to any EU country without having to take a test. This was not the case if you left the EU and went to the UK or the US, for example. But in the past couple of weeks, four EU countries, Portugal, Ireland, and now most recently Italy and uh, Greece, have introduced COVID testing requirements for people, even if they're vaccinated and are coming from an EU country. That has angered the European Commission, which says it wasn't notified at all, particularly by Italy, which has a lot of serious ramifications. Uh, and other EU leaders, two prime ministers, the Belgian prime minister and the Luxembourg prime minister, voiced their frustration as they came in today, saying uh, they should, we should not let the Omicron variant destroy this system of vaccination trust that's been built in the European Union. It's been a success success story of unity over the past six months, uh, it, countries should not be eroding that unity now. But the concern is that if, as initial research seems to suggest, two doses of a vaccine doesn't help prevent the spread of Omicron and that a booster is needed, then the trust in somebody's vaccination status, meaning that they won't be carrying the virus, is diluted. And the whole system of the EU's vaccine passport, whether it's for domestic purposes,
purposes or for international travel is suddenly in trouble. So that's going to be a big discussion today. Italy and those other countries are going to have to defend their decision to start requiring tests from people traveling from EU countries. Uh, and the Commission and some uh, EU, other EU countries are going to be arguing, look, let's not take rash actions now because we're risking having the entire system we painstakingly built up for the past six months suddenly collapse. For his part, the Greek Prime Minister, as he was coming in this morning, said he only anticipates this testing requirement to be there for the Christmas period and that it would be gone by January. Dave, thanks for that. Dave Keating there in Brussels. Now, the French